I'm Glenn Lawrence. I'm a Level 3 Surf Coach in Byron Bay Surf Club. In this DVD we're going to run through skills and techniques for beginners to intermediates to teach them how to paddle skis in surf lifesaving. Look at him blowing it out. Look at the power of the man. Look at the body just flexing as he really just puts everything in to drive these skis. They go at a billion mile an hour and now he's starting to chase the runs. Look at the speed. Paddling with the catch straight out and getting a square blade, so to speak, so that the blade is beside the boat and not, say, positioned like out that way, like a duck kind of duck bill paddling kind of thing, will ensure that the boat moves a lot smoother. Um, if you were to enter the water with blades at an angle like this, you may actually push the boat from side to side. Also, entering the water with the elbows bent and not stretching right out may force the boat to bob up and down. So, main thing with catch to remember is to reach out, make sure the blade is square and that your top hand isn't going to shoot up. At the end of the recovery, the hand should finish at eye height and slightly across the midline of the body. Then the paddle in the water is lifted cleanly out by body rotation and the arm bending at the elbow. As in swimming and board paddling, it is vital to maximise the reach component of the catch. By leaning slightly forward and pointing the shoulder towards the front of the ski, it increases the reach, allowing the blade to enter the water well in front of the foot pedals. The closer the paddle can be kept to vertical, the more efficient the stroke. This paddler has excellent shoulder extension, but is losing 10 to 15 centimetres of stroke by not getting his blade into the water as early as possible. With the catch, as the left arm grabs the water, the left heel pushes down so that you can use all body twist to drive the screw through the water. The more leg drive you get, the more abdominals and lower back you can use to force the ski through the water. Pull through, which is basically the body of the stroke in the water. Um, your stroke after a good catch, you need to again follow the line of your boat along the side of the boat. Uh, if you're going to push out, again you may push the boat off to side, side like that. So you need to basically try and keep your elbow fairly straight, follow the boat along the side of the boat before you commence your exit. In this example, the paddler is not pulling directly down the side of the ski, he's pulling wide and you can see the ski moving from side to side. In the pull through it's vital that you pull down straight beside the boat so all the force propels the ski forward, as in this example. Any sideways movement and you're losing a lot of your energy in the ski bouncing around. There's no doubt about that. He's not going to get the advantage. He's not far enough in front. When the blade enters the water, the arm is nearly straight. By locking the arm and not increasing the bend at the elbow, you're using the arms as a lever to transfer power from the body and legs. If you increase the elbow bend during the stroke, you are restricting the possible muscles providing power to the arms and the shoulders good recovery of a stroke which will help lead towards another stroke that should be good. Um, a lot of people make the mistake of recovering with their shoulder. They pull the whole blade out of the water and lift up their shoulder and then their elbow and then set, out, set up their next stroke somewhere with their hand too far away from the head. A um, good thing to remember is after you pull through, the recovery should basically be flick of the elbow and then you can lift the shoulder afterwards that way. You're a lot more efficient and you're actually getting your blade set up for the next stroke in a, a much more correct position. Good body twist and leg drive is the difference between average and outstanding paddlers. Without it, the paddler is only using arms, shoulders and upper back. If you drive through the heels, it allows the thighs, abdominals and lower back, greatly increasing the power of the stroke.
having good body twists, allows the arm to exit the water smoothly. The hand pushes forward, and as the shoulders rotate, it allows maximum reach at the front of the stroke. Puts everything in to drive these skis. They go at a billion mile an hour, and now he's starting to chase the runs. Look at the speed. Starts in ski paddling requires coordination and timing, and lots of practice will perfect it. For a right-handed ski start, the right hand is positioned in the middle of the seat well with the palm resting on the ski and the fingers holding the paddle. The left hand is holding the ski in the middle of the footwell. Shoulders are over the top of the hands with the weight evenly distributed between the arms. The body is crouched over and legs are bent. Eyes are looking where the feet are going to finish on the foot strap. The forward motion for the ski start comes from the leg drive. Never take your eyes off the foot straps as you jump in. As the start progresses, the right leg comes through the arms and the left leg goes on the outside of the ski. A ski start has a very high stroke rate. The catch position is unchanged, but the length of the stroke is shorter, with an earlier exit allowing for the higher rating. As the speed increases, the stroke gets longer. Water ski, as uh, we get underway, and we'll uh, begin to pick them up for you. One of them has been left at the start. As you can see in this race, the start is crucial. After 50 metres, there can be a three or four length difference between the leader and the back marker. When negotiating the brake, the speed and momentum that the paddler can apply to their ski when hitting the whitewater is the key to successful racing. By paddling hard and timing the stroke so that there is a stroke just before the wave, then one right on top of the whitewater, the competitor can, with practice, lose very little speed on small to medium sized waves. With larger waves you have to lean right to the back of the ski to pull the nose up and over the white water and then paddle over the top. It's important to keep paddling all the way through the brake. In this open field you can see some paddling, some pausing. If they can maintain their paddling up and over the white water, they gain length on the competition. On smaller waves you can successfully pop a whitewater and not lose much speed. On larger waves it can almost stop the ski dead. The man, he's absolutely stepped out of the surf for a while, he's concentrated on the kayaks, but gee it's good to see him in action. Another skill needed to negotiate the break is to be able to punch through a breaking wave. As you approach the wave, maximum power, and as you go through the wave, grab the other side of the wave and drag yourself through. Here we go, watch this uh, surf pick up. Rolling your ski. All beginners should master this and as their skill increases they can pop larger waves. They need only to do it on the biggest waves. Usually momentum will help so paddle right up to the wave. Keep the ski at direct right angles to the wave all the time. Any extra angle increases the force the wave can apply. To roll, put the paddle in your left hand Grab the right foot strap with your right hand and force the nose of the ski through the wave. As the wave goes over, flick the ski back over and get on and paddle again as fast as you can. A good training drill is to practice rolling in flat water. The technique can be improved in small surf, but the timing and knowing when to roll, punch or pop can only be learnt by practicing in a larger surf. As you approach the buoys, it's important to get position. The inside run is obviously the most valuable. A lot of the best paddlers really put the power on 20 to 50 metres before the buoy to set themselves up for when they go around. The apex turn is the most acute angle turn, and there are often runners that can be caught from this point, so it is important that the right line is taken on the approach to the buoy. The ski should be at least at right angles to the beach, and preferably facing the beach a bit when you get round the can. By taking longer strokes on the outside and shorter strokes on the inside of the ski, a faster turn is possible. Every time the rudder is used, it slows the ski down, and as the ski needs the completion of the turn, the rudder pressure should be decreased to allow the ski to pick up speed again. The right line around the buoy should also allow for other competitors, 
as any clash slows both of their skis down. Julian Norton Smith from Surface Australian Kayak representative. There's probably three or four of them Australian Kayak representatives. This is where Clint will come into his own. The secret to catching a wave is power. Power to catch the run and power to get out in front of it. You must keep the ski at 90 degrees to the wave as it breaks. Title number 28, Clint Robinson. Will he hold it? Well, no one pulls a run like Clint Robinson. As you run down the wave, you have to time your sprint. It's important to get out in front of the wave so the rudder still has purchase. As the white water picks up the back of the ski, you can lean back a little bit to maintain its effectiveness in the white water. Outside big wave now. Some waves are just too large to hold straight. And there's an important technique that you can practice called bronco riding. If you can master this technique in small surfs and practice it doing it all the time in small waves, you can learn how to finish a race properly. As the ski starts to go sideways, lean back, drop your beach side leg over and hold onto the ski with your ocean side elbow. Wait till the wave loses its power and then try and drag yourself back ground using your leg and your paddle and you can finish straight. And Shoemaker on the final wave. In finishing, there's two important factors. In this example, it's the timing of the sprint, using the run from the small wave to get out in front of the competitors. They're going to have to begin to paddle now anyway. It's a real paddle off. Now that is huge. In this example, the race has been won by the position the girls take before they even get to the sprint finish. They're both going flat out, but one hasn't allowed for where the finishing flag is. So Holly Houston will pick up the silver medal. When learning how to paddle a ski, and once reasonable balance is achieved, the paddler should have regular skill training sessions. The more time that can be spent in the break, the better. Learning how to handle a huge range of conditions will greatly improve their race performance and allow them to achieve their potential. I'd just like to run through some features with you of the racing ski. One of the major issues is removing the bung when you come into the beach. The air expands and it can crack the ski. When you go back out in the water, make sure you put five or six breaths back in. So when the water hits the ski and the air contracts, it won't crack the ski again and it'll keep the sh correct shape for racing. We'll just run through some other features of the ski. Before you go to a major carnival, always check to make sure there's nothing going to be damaged and let you down. These cables are probably only meant to last 18 months without being stretched and made tightening so you check to make sure there's no fraying, no damage of the foot straps and everything's safe. There's no sharp bits on the edge of the ski and you check the other end of the cables inside the hatch cover and make sure they're safe and aren't going to fall apart just when you need them. It's important when selecting a ski to get one that fits your legs properly. You have to have good clearance underneath your knee. If you don't have the good clearance, then you cannot get maximum leg drive. If your ski's too long, you can't put pressure on your heels and you can hurt your back. And if it's too short, it makes you much more unstable and hurt your back as well. With the seat, before you go out, it's a good idea to put some wax in the bottom so that your bottom's anchored safely for when you do the bouncing over the chops or hitting a wave sideways. I'd like to talk to you about paddles and shafts. We've got a big range of paddle sizes and used in surf life saving from 205s to 218 centimetres. The biggest, strongest kite paddlers can use the really long ones. The trouble is a long blade and long shaft is really slows your rating down, which can impede you if you've got to start five or six times in one race. A general rule for paddling with the ski, you want your 90 degree angle at your elbows and your hands evenly spaced along the shaft. 